Fin Talks. I'm your host, Tanya Ricketts, and tonight we are joined by Soul Brother Dane. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes. So we're going to have fun tonight because it is a series that I'm doing on uh, the heart of a man, and your particular title is The Whole Man. And I just want to just give a little the audience a little bit of background of yourself. So welcome back to Canada because you were in Costa Rica. I sure was. Yes, yeah, so welcome back. And you are a healing artist, a holistic practitioner, a curator of consciousness of the consciousness communities. Um, you're a supporter of men, women, and children on their spiritual journey to awaken their souls. You work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you um, help them with their health, their healing, their mind, and it's just the deeper part of their soul, uh, doing retreats, workshops, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, just internationally around the world. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, it's an honor. Yeah, so I want you guys, I'm going to say it in the beginning, I'm going to put it in the, um, the description after the show, and I'll say it at the end, but after today's conversation, if hearing you talk about this, I want everybody to start following you so that we can embrace the works that you're doing with us, um, helping us and assisting us to raise our level of consciousness and to have a healthier life experience within our souls. So you can find Dane at um, Soul Brother Dane, is it Vital Key Wellness, Luminous Collective, and Evolving Brothers. Did I get it all right? <laughs> yeah, you did, yeah. Good. <laughs> so let's just get started. Uh, we're talking about the whole man. And I guess the first question that really does come to my mind is where did we start? Where did we begin in your life? What's your story of what you felt you weren't living true to who you were that put you on this journey? Hmm. I think it, it, it comes down to like, when I think about that question and when I think about my story, um, I think about you know growing up as a kid um, and feeling a little weird, feeling like always wanting to fit in. And I kind of carried out through my teenage years and uh, knowing that I was, you know, I, I felt very empathic. I could feel like, you know, other people's pain. I felt very like, you know, when I saw someone getting bullied, for instance, I would like feel for the person getting bullied and I would like do something to the bully to like diffuse that. And so there was a time when, you know, I was uh, at a young age pursuing a, a, a career in, uh, in construction. And I, to me that, you know, I was, uh, you know, I learned a, a trade at a young age. And so that was kind of like the fallback or, 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 or the path of, I knew that for sure I would have a job, I for sure I would make money. And, you know, and knowing that I wanted to be of service, there was something inside me, like, I want to be of service to people. I want to help people build something, create something, fix something. And I really enjoyed it. And, and it was something that, um, you know, I was good at. And so doing that and then just noticing the people that I was doing work for and noticing that, you know, I could build like a $20,000 bathroom for them and they were still not happy mm -hmm. or there was still something that was like, I could feel something within them. And just to give you a little bit of backstory about like my lineage and like my mother is a, is a healing, uh, spiritual healer, sh a shamanic practitioner, a curandera in Spanish, which is, means medicine woman. And uh, her great her grandfather back home in Colombia was uh, was a curandero, was a shaman, and uh, you know, um, the one in the village, one of the one is in the village that uh, would do healings and would do stuff for the community. And so there was a, a, a inner something inside me that wanted to like kind of serve a little bit deeper on, with the people. And you know, in in my late in my early twenties, my uh, my mom comes up to me. She's like, you know, I have this. I have this calling to build a, a, a holistic healing center and something just kind of like clicked inside me. I'm like, wow, that sounds amazing. Um, that would be awesome. I would love to be a part of that, like do it. And like, how can I support you? And at this time, I didn't know, you know, like, you know, what that looked like, but I just felt something inside was just like, yeah, like I, I want to do something in that realm. And so um, actually helped to uh, renovate our first um, location, in, which was a, an old Chinese restaurant, and we turned it into this big holistic center. And so I was still in construction, and I actually um, 
uh, went off on my own as an entrepreneur in construction. Um, I found out I was going to be a dad at a very young age, 22 years old. And so I'm like, okay, I got to, you know, I got to step up. I got to, you know, make some money. And, and so I went through the whole entrepreneur phase of like building this renovation company. And at the same time, there was this idea of this holistic healing center that was being literally being built um, simultaneously. And I knew that it was something that I wanted to be involved with more, but I had to like make ends meet. And I, you know, I had diapers to buy and I had, you know, stuff to take care of. And, um, and so it was very pivotal that, you know, when I tuned into my day to day and being busy with, with construction, I was just like, wow, there's something missing. Like I, I want to be more involved in the other project. And so that was kind of like the, the knowing I was just like, and that, that, uh, holistic healing center, which is vital key wellness, um, went through its challenges. We, we opened up 2007, 2008, where a lot of people weren't ready for holistic healing yet at that time. Mm -hmm. And 2008 was the year of the recession. So we went belly up essentially, and uh, you know, almost lost everything. Mm. And, but there was like this knowing, and every time like I would talk with my mom, there was just this knowing that there was just like, there's this faith that it, it, it's, it's, it's meant to happen. And uh, through my twenties, you know, it was, it was a grind. It was a hustle. It was like working, um, you know, essentially, an entrepreneur in, in renovations and in contracting and also like supporting and, you know, giving energy to vital key and, um, you know, uh, supporting my mom, you know, energetically in any way that I could. And we essentially, we, um, we moved locations and we, and we constructed another, did another renovation at another location. And I was like, okay, like the transition is going to happen. I'm going to transition into, into this field. And so I'm like, but I got to learn something. I got to, you know, be able to serve people in a different way. And I was very um, into meditation um, and energy work. And so I got into Reiki and um, went through the trainings, got certified. And then I was like, okay, like at a business perspective, <clears throat> not everyone's lining up to, to do Reiki, you know, <laughs> not everyone's, I can, I can, I can understand that. <laughs> right. Not everyone's like open to meditation even. Yes. And this is, we're talking about 2011, 2012. Right. Like, right. It was still kind of taboo at the time, ironically. Right. Now it's getting more popular. Um, and so it was just like, okay, well, the more I, I felt like the more I learned, the more I, tools I have, the more I can better serve people. And so um, I took a, a course called Fascial Stretch Therapy. I got into osteopathy. And um, and then I, I, I made the leap and I left construction. I hung up the tool belt and uh, and I went full into uh, to, to Vital Key building my practice as an osteopathic manual practitioner, fascial stretch therapist, Reiki practitioner. I did a yoga teacher training. Uh, I, I, I had the call to work with uh, crystal bowl singing, uh, crystal singing bowls and, and, uh, and work with sound healing. And it came to me that even in that period where I'm like, okay, I did it. I, I, I switched careers. I'm, I'm following my passion. And there was a lot of like, um, there was still, there was still something in disharmony. There was still something that was like, is osteopathy really my calling? And, and I just really felt like there's, I can work on your body. I can like tell you what's up with your body, but there's something underneath there. There's something on, like energetically or emotional. That's, you know, that, and then that kind of like, um, at that same time, actually this one, like plant medicines kind of came into my sphere, into my experience. And, uh, I, um, I had my first experience with a plant medicine called ayahuasca mm -hmm. and that really like expanded my consciousness in a way that really kind of gave me some clarity of like, oh, okay, this kind of makes sense. And it kind of shifted me in a way that um, allowed me to really tune into my heart and what that calling and purpose really is mm -hmm. and not like what, you know, society thinks I should be doing or like even on a business perspective, people in the business think I should be doing. And so those are just like a, a few of, of the main things that really like set my heart on fire. And it was just like, okay, I, I feel like there's some purpose and some fire there. And, uh, and that led me more into, into the plant medicine um, path mm -hmm. and working with people deeper energetically, shamanically, um, learning a lot of those um, shamanic traditions through my lineage, through my mother, through energy work, through uh, a shaman in Costa Rica. 
and um it's been a full dive ever since and it's been like a, a path that I, I find a lot of purpose in and so all these tools and all this experience and all this practice that I've been doing over these years um, has really got me into a place right now where I'm truly following my heart, following my purpose and leading through that heart um, where that's how I'm honoring myself. Mm. If it doesn't bring me uh, joy. If it doesn't bring me um, passion, then it's probably not for me. <laughs> right, right. And I'm sure COVID helps out for a lot of people in this world. We were talking about it yesterday. I just want to go back to the beginning part of the conversation when you talked about being younger. Number one, you're, you're kind of DNA wise, it's, it's in your system. You know, the whole energy healing, you've got a lineage of it, which I think is phenomenal. It's great. Um, but now you're, an, you realize that you're, you're an empath and, you know, people being bullied and, and kind of the position you're taking how awake a were you to that and b did it get numbed out over the years because i always say that you know that when we're in that childlike state when we're four or five up to about eight years old we're in that pure like we can feel our souls and then somehow through trauma through all kinds of influences it just it it doesn't die it just gets buried that's a great question. And, and, and I'll, I'll share, like when I first kind of realized that looking back now, it's just like, okay, like I, I can pinpoint a time when I really felt that, that empathy. And it was, um, I was about 10 or 11 years old. And um, my father called me into the kitchen one day and he sat down and broke down crying. Mm. And he said to me, your mother and I are getting a divorce. And I was just like shocked and I was just seeing him crying and I felt more bad for him than I did about the news that like our family's getting broken up and like that, what that entails. I didn't even fully grasp it. I was a bit in shock, but I really noticed um, the pain in my dad. I was like, holy shit. Like he's really, excuse my language. He was, he's really feeling the sadness and I was, and I didn't really know what to do with it. I was just like, oh, okay. And then through like through that whole process, it was it felt my mom's energy and how she was dealing with it. My dad's, my brother and sister that who didn't really understand much what was going on, but they knew something was happening. And then you have like extended family that was like kind of like involved somehow, you know, and feeling them and how they were you know dealing with it. And I was just like, oh, this is like too much energy. Like I don't want to feel this shit anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I I kind of got into a bit of like a, 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 a I kind of closed my heart a bit, and I'm mm. just like and kind of guarded and really um, was just like dealing it with it on my own. And I was just like, I don't want to feel anyone else's stuff. And I kind of like was there the guard, but it, it still will show up as I mentioned, like in, in different scenarios. And I'll be like, Oh, this person is getting like bullied or something. I was just like, Oh, and I would act out. And like, and a lot of times that acting out was, um, was triggered by suppressed empathy or suppressed emotions mm. that I had that was just like built up. And then I would find myself in getting into fights, um, getting myself into situations that were like channel some of these emotions or built up, you know, empathy would say. Uh, and um, it wasn't until I had to like reopen my heart or like crack it back open again. And I think what was the catalyst for that was having my daughter. Mm. And um, kids will do it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, experiencing that was like, wow, especially thinking I was having a boy and then the doctor's like, congrats, a beautiful baby girl. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but then after I was just like immediately melted, fell in love, felt my heart buzzing and just like, wow, there's a, there, there is, a, you know, there is another layer of, of my heart that I wasn't accessing. And uh, it's been a dance with that over, through my 20s of like opening the heart, closing the heart, going through a breakup, through, a, through another breakup sorry, through a breakup with her mom, going through a breakup with another partner after her and just like ebbing and flowing with how I'm tapping into my heart or not. And then it wasn't, it was, um, you know, leaning into that, leaning into the heart and, and figuring out what's there. And it's still an ongoing process in a sense. But when I really st started opening up was when I was journeying a little bit more with plant medicines and really like getting into the root of things and realizing how the closure of my heart was causing me to have certain characteristics or traits that weren't 
conducive to healthy well-being mentally um, and emotionally. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that would result in like suppressed anger, uh, suppressed sadness and whatnot. And so um, I don't know if I'm going off on a tangent here, but. No, I, I think it's great. I think it's, it's amazing for me. And, and you know, women were, were, were socialized to talk about our feelings. And for the fact that you were so aware of, or you, I don't know if uh, what stage you were in that started to get into that level of awareness, but just for the fact that you're aware of how your heart's opening and closing, the valves is opening and closing, I think it's quite amazing. And, I, you know, this is what the whole series was about, was the heart of a man, um, was how do we how do we start to introduce it into society where men can start to talk about their emotions and understand where their heart valve is opening and closing so i think it's quite amazing uh, and thank you for sharing it yeah and, and i think it also comes to like understanding that for me in particular there, there i do have a sense a sensitive soul we'll say okay and um and looking back and and seeing how i had to like put an armor to, to not allow people to see that sensitivity that, and I think that's in this day and age as well is, is an issue that men are facing in regards to um, feeling and expressing their sensitivity, whatever it is. And so we put on this mask or we put on, we put this armor in front of us that, you know, really protects us. And I, I found myself doing that a lot throughout my journey, you know, putting up the armor and like not allowing myself to be seen as vulnerable or, 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 or having these emotions of sadness or grief or whatnot. Uh, and that usually was around other men. Really? Was, okay. Yeah. It was like to, to have that front in, in front of other men, right. like, you know, that and what was life. the reasoning? Um, the reasoning was, did, I didn't want to come out as looking weak. Mm. I, felt, I, I was thought, I thought that that is being weak. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the, the, the awareness that on the contrary, it actually makes you strong. <laughs> vulnerability is, is a sign of courage and a sign of strength. Yes. I learned that for myself. And that's what I teach uh, men in, in, in this time now, um, how we can use our vulnerability and our sensitivity as strengths, um, which is super important. It's, it's, it's so how important. did that like, you know, and I don't need the nitty gritty details, but just capturing the essence of what that started to feel like as you started to be with other men and started to operate from your heart where this is what it is and it's just about having that courage to authentically show up in the moment of saying this is what I'm feeling now and not judge yourself or concern yourself with or labeling it as being weak or strong or anything but just it is what it is yeah and I think for me coming up in this holistic health industry you know from you know, from a while ago, over a decade ago, and being in circles that were predominantly women um, allowed me to tap more into my femininity. Mm. Allowed me to t- tap into that sensitivity without like there's no men, so I'm like, okay, I could show up as I am, right, and not you know fear being judged by these other men. And it wasn't until maybe um, I witnessed other men being being vulnerable, or even. Um, a dear uh, healer of mine that I that I I see I've seen and see regularly, which I'm doing for a, a session with him because I miss him, um, is a, a healer named Roberto Jativa, and uh, he's held some incredible space for me as a brother, like as a as a man, to allow me to go into those those places of vulnerability and open my heart and be raw, and um, in that uh, in that safe space, I, I realized that yeah, it's okay to 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 access these, these parts of me. And then do, being in, in uh, other men's groups, men's circles, conscious men's circles, another dear brother of mine named Darren Austin Hall uh, was doing stuff back in 2016, 2015. And just seeing other men like come in circle and like talk about their feelings. I was just like, okay, there's more of us out here. Okay, <laughs> that, that's awesome. And so that gave me more permission and that you know allowed me to, to tap into that, that medicine of brotherhood and, uh, and, and access my heart and access that vulnerability. Nice. So now you've experienced both worlds, just with the nature of the work that you do and what you've been called to do in your purpose. Now you get to experience both men and women. Um, Is there a huge difference in the way men and women become vulnerable? Yes. Yes. And this, I mean, or do we communicate the same? Or do we 
do we share the same expression of vulnerability? Hmm, that's a good question. I would say the expression is pretty similar. Mm-hmm. When, 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 when men get to that point of, of completely opening up, you know, tears are tears, cries are cries, you know, emotions are emotions, sobs are sobs. Uh, getting there is, is it's, it's, it's different. You know, women are, are more, what I've noticed, are, it's, it's been easier for them to, to access that part of themselves. Uh, I feel like there's been more women circles, more women in, in the healing industry um, than men over time. It, men are starting to catch up a little now. Uh, I, w- I would say that for sure. Um, but it's, it's taken more time for men to get to that point of being open and expressing and sharing their, their vulnerability and emotions than I've seen with women. Women, it's easier access. Um, yeah. And we're taught to be more comfortable in that space where men necessarily haven't been nurtured in that space. Um, you, you're, you're part of Evolving Brothers. Um, and what makes your group unique and special um, in terms of creating that space for men to open up? Yeah, I mean, uh, what makes it unique would be that um, it, it's, not, it's not fixed on one component of, of you know, men, mind, body, soul, emotion. Uh, it's it's more open, I would say, to to all realms of of, of healing, of connection, of uh, practices, of tools, and uh, involving brothers. You know, is is an expression of sorry. It's an example of how uh, men can come together and connect in a more conscious way with intention. Mm-hmm. And, and, and do so in, in a safe space without judgment. So allowing men to show up as they are, mm-hmm. you know, seeing no ranks in like, you know, who's more conscious than the, another. It's, it's not about that. Uh, it's about just creating a safe space for us all to drop in as we are. Uh, mm-hmm. A chance to, to speak our truth, a ch- chance to listen and hold space for each other. Um, outside of the normal, you know, men are usually... Um, used to connecting, you know, in the locker rooms, via, you know, watching sports, going to the bars. It's very just testosterone, um, suck it up type. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is, it's like, there is a lot of just, there's a lot of healthy use for that energy. And it's mm-hmm. not about suppressing the masculine and the testosterone. It's about, um, you know, bringing in some harmony with the feminine as well, or at least mm-hmm giving a, a allowance and space and permission for people to, for men to tap into that and mm-hmm. to express that. So with Evolving Brothers, it's, it's just that. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a safe space for brothers to come together and connect more consciously and, you know, uh, and talk about things that are, that are more, uh, that have more feeling um, than like surface level stuff. And, I like that. I, it's really nice. It, I like the connectability part to it where it's a space and, and I wish more like woman, you said it in the, sh- like you just said it, that woman, we have a lot of places that we can turn and we have that space to connect and to do this. And it is starting to happen. Um, it'd be nice to see it really bloom where men had that space to connect and out of their comfort zone is what I call it. <laughs> oh, sure. You know what? Like it, it's, it's, it's happening. It really is. It, it's, me being in it and uh, me being, you know, in the holistic health and wellness and, and consciousness communities and, and industries, I definitely see it now more than ever. Um, yeah, I just think back, I just think back like five years ago and it, it was very dormant still. There was, or it was more underground. It was like men didn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Now there's like a lot more, you know, pride and and um, and honor in in this work because so many men's lives are changed, are being changed, mm. are being improved. So, you know, let's talk about from the energy perspective because you do a lot of this energy work. So let's talk about, you know, women show up and they're ready in Costa Rica and they're, you know, we've got all of our bohemian dresses on and everything else. Great, right? I've never been, but I can only imagine. <laughs> so men show up. What's that transformation looking like? I'm sure. From a muscle testing perspective, energetic, energetically, that they're coming very close, very tense, very um, a, a level of curiosity with like a paint, like a baby toe in the door, 
but everything else outside on the other side. What does that look like as you're doing your work to help open up the soul on that level? Well, I have two answers for that. The, the, yeah. the, the first answer would be how men show up in places like Costa Rica, um, in the places where I live or I, I create and I'm part of community there is way much different than it is here in the, in, up in, in Canada or, or the US. Uh, I'll talk for Canada because that's, that's where I live. Um, they're a lot more open. They're a lot more exposed. In, cost, in the, in the, in, in the communities in, in Costa Rica that I'm a part of. Men show up open and ready. They're, they're aware. And I, Is I'll, it the environment from the perspective if it's a more naturistic environment? Is it because of the culture? What, what is the stark difference? The difference is definitely the, the, the vortex in, in Costa Rica. There's an energetic vortex there that is just so supportive of people like awakening and opening up more, being more vibrant, being more um, trusting, I guess I would say. And so there's also like already communities that are practicing a lot more of like openness and, uh, and men's work and and so there is that there's there's less resistance I find that in, in circles that I've held in Costa Rica, uh, or that I've been to in Costa Rica that are just like guys or people yeah guys, men that, that travel to Costa Rica, and are part of these communities or or come out to these communities, already are open and already like willing to kind of get out out of their comfort zone and and be comfortable in that uncomfortableness. In Canada. Uh, and from what I've what I've learned and what I've seen firsthand, you know, when I first um, founded Evolving Brothers in 2019, um, there was a little a little little bit of hesitance, but we I, like we got good numbers showing up, like like anywhere between 15 to 25 people men would would show up, and there, that's there a were big number of, for uh, yeah <laughs> yeah I know, um, but it was a lot of curiosity. It was like guys were like, hey, what is this? And they're like. They want to connect more consciously. That there's like that inner calling within them. They're like, I want to like do something more. I see my wife doing yoga, or I see my sister doing meditation. And they're like, they're so zen. Like, I need more peace in life. And like, there's this conscious men circle. Like, what is that all about? And so they come and they're like, they open the door. Like, okay, who, who's here? Oh, I know that guy. Okay, cool. Hey, what's up? You're here. Okay, blah, blah, blah. okay. I don't know anyone else here. Okay, we sit down and then um, gauging by that, by that energy and by that, you know, maybe like a little bit of a, of a shield of like, okay, well, what's happening here. I engage in practices that, that help them to move, to open up mm -hmm. and, uh, and to trust in, in the space that's being held and, you know, speak forth into the space, some guidelines and some, you know, some assurance that like, you're not being judged here, bro. No one's going to kick you out of here because you're angry or upset or swear or whatever, or because you drink or whatever. Like it's, it's, whatever the device may be or, or whatever that they, they feel maybe guilty towards or don't want to express that in emotion or whatnot. And so usually after like the first five, 10 minutes, you see the guards start coming down and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, so we're just, we're having just real conversations here, you know? And then there's other like practices that we'll have that, you know, either have a guest come in to do something, whether it be a, a Qigong or a, a breath work or, um, meditation or you know movement and in breathing together and moving together and, and speaking with each other the guard comes down even more it comes, mm -hmm. comes down even more then hearing someone be vulnerable hear another person be vulnerable and it's like oh okay that's, that's safe to do that these guys are doing it and do you think it's part of doing that energy work that is just starting to open up the soul that connects it in a way. And then the vibration of the room is starting to release it. So 100%. Um, are they able to, you know, I, I'm always curious because again, it is continuing to support men embracing this work. Um, do you find that there's a shift that they can connect to? Are they able to actually feel it, identify it? have the vocabulary to communicate what it, that they're going through within their soul? Uh, yeah, I think so, for sure. I think, you know, as, as we're leading these, these exercises or these practices, you know, we're, there, there's, there is guidance involved. It's, it's not just like giving them this experience and then being like, not, you know, addressing it or not, you know, not um, guiding them through it. And so 
you know, as, as they're experiencing it, they're also learning more about it and being exposed to it. And so that sparks their curiosity. And it's always encouraged for people to like do some research or, or start your own group. You know what I mean? Like you have to have some, some brothers or some, some friends that, you know, would love to like um, connect more consciously, you know, get onto nature or whatnot. And so these, these experiences and in, in these gatherings um, expose them and open them up energetically in, in a way of um, realizing that, wow, there is more to us than just our logical mind, our, you know, structure, our, the, the to-do list, you know, accomplishing something. It's like, wait a minute, we can sit together and we can breathe and we can receive some energy and we can receive mm -hmm. some, you know, some of, uh, of the, this medicine that I call brotherhood medicine. It's just like, it's- Oh, I like that. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> brotherhood medicine. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that for me in the works that I do with individuals, crying is a detoxer. You know, it pulls, it helps to relieve the emotion. It's a good thing. It's, you know, it doesn't matter what you're crying for, joy. It just, it's, it's a release. And men are taught not to cry. Do you find that them going through this process, all of a sudden their body opens up and they start to cry as a way of a release? There are definitely men that cry, yes. And, and do you so, find anybody holding back that won't allow themselves to cry? 100%. There, okay. there's, there's both, yeah. There's, you know, there's, depending on where, where, these, where everyone's at, right? Like there's, when one person cries, it gives permission for another person to cry, mm -hmm. you know, or... You know, someone um, may not feel comfortable crying in front of people, or maybe they haven't cried in so long that they're afraid that if they start crying, it's going to open up the floodgates. 100%. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's happened. It's happened to me. It's happened to me before. But right? it's such a great thing. Like, I, you know, if it's oh, happened to you, then you know the feeling of you cry, you cry, you cry, and it, uses up so much energy that you require like it's for me i have to take a nap like a good cry and then i take a nap but you wake up feeling this sense of lightness and this peace that comes over you so it, you know so i embrace like i'm like let's have crying parties <laughs> crying <laughs> <And> parties <laughs> totally and all have our yoga mats out with a pillow and a blanket amazing and fall asleep you know and just what it does to the body to just continue releasing the emotional plaque that has been that we're even carrying lineage wise you know and looking to re-alter and restructure and to just participate in the healing not just within ourselves but the world at large and just become more in balance with it i just think it's phenomenal i love a good cry with a nap and like everyone <sighs> yeah you got the <sighs> yeah because you can think clearly all of a sudden you have a reason, like it's like emptying out something out of a jar. Like you've now made space in your life for something new to come in. I agree, because I agree. And you've I, just released. Yeah, and I, I definitely feel that there's more crying that needs to happen for men, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, there's just so much suppression of that. So much right. like the ideology around like, if you cry, you're weak, real men don't cry. If you cry, you're a wuss, all this stuff that is just like, that's not right. That's not right. right. That doesn't well, I, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there for the audience to hear. I'm asking Dane if he can have a crying party, like it's <laughs> designated. Hey guys, who wants hey, to come just, out? You just sparked a, a great idea. For, yeah. For I think it would be phenomenal. I'd love to, I'd love to hear the feedback on how that is. I'd like to help you promote it if ever you decide to do it. So I'd, I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that one, wouldn't you? Well, well, what I'd love to do is I'd, if you ever did do it, so I, I'm, I'm holding, hold me, hold me on this one. If you ever decide to do it, I'm asking the audience myself, everybody do what we can to help promote this because I think that this would be a phenomenal, I think it'd be a phenomenal, not even workshop because it's not a workshop. I think it would be a phenomenal event in a space for yeah and the way i see it it'll be like a ceremony where it's just right like, like really dropping in i mean it's it's definitely <clears throat> something that I've, i do with uh with a smaller container that i'm a part of um where we we that's open and we have that support system it's another thing too to just have like this big crime party with with a bunch of men and then 
okay, bye. It's like, right. Oh shit. Like <laughs> what we've, do opened I up, do? we've opened up something here. So I, it's, it's about also like making sure that there's support systems in, in, intact for that too as, as well. But you planted a seed and I'm, I'm, I love that seed for sure. Yes. So talk to, talk to me a little bit about if you're able to tie in your personal experience of why you feel that it's essential for men to really embark on this journey because it's still a very new thing it's it, you know about men embarking on the journey of healing that inner child within them i feel it's one of the most essential things that men should be need to be doing right now um with the way the world is at right now you know not there hasn't been a time where we have been so awakened and so suppressed at the same time almost. Um, so it's super essential for men to be doing this inner work and, and to, to, to going deep within themselves um, because it's, it's time to really access more of who we truly are, mm. not who- so Do you feel that men don't really have access? Like, you know, they've been conditioned. Do That's what I'm that saying. That's what I'm getting at. I feel like yeah. we've been conditioned and programmed groomed to be the specific type of of men that um is not truly connected to to our our to the anatomy of our spirit to, mm. to, to the to the divine feminine divine masculine within and you hear this term being thrown around toxic masculinity and it's you know it's like yeah that's a thing but it's also just a lack of awareness and a lack of space and time to journey within to do this inner work, to, to, to touch in and meet our, our inner child and see what, you know, where, the, where the, do they need the healing and the love and the support that maybe they didn't have? Where did they have these moments in life where they were told it's not okay to cry or, mm. it, or that you have to, that you can't, um, you know, show emotion or that you can't be uh, sensitive. And it's not just about that as well. It's like, you know, this is a big topic because a lot of men are carrying around a lot of generational um, karma, generational mm -hmm. trauma that has essentially brought in trauma and drama into their lives that, you know, perhaps it's still lingering in their, in their space, in their subconscious. And so it's important that we do like, we do this inner work to transcend these old paradigms, this, this generational karma to heal our lineage, the work that we do on ourselves now um, uh, leads, I mean, we are the ancestors of our future generations. And so how do we want to, you know, pave that road for our-, our... Say that again. I like that one. <laughs> I got yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, we are the ancestors of our future generations and right. we're paving the way for these, for our children and our children's children. And so we have to transcend these old paradigms. We have to really come come to ourselves and, and awaken our hearts and find that fire within our heart that is essentially the, 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 the voice to our soul and get out of our heads and connect with nature and connect with the, the rhythms and the cycles of nature and understand that we are nature. We've been so divided and we've been so in this rat race and this competition that we got to get ours. And like, you know, there's not enough for everyone. So coming back to co-creation, co cooperation, cohesion, and, um, and seeing each other, men seeing each other as, as brothers and not as competition or enemy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we need that as men to navigate life and whatever life is being thrown at us. Our families need us to be the men, to be that, you know, that, that support system, that, that strength, that, you know, that anchor. Our, our communities need us so we can do our part to co-create community, to you know, uh, share our gifts, our skills. And that, that ripples out. You know, society gets a grip of that and the, you know, it, it spreads and it ripples out. And so, yeah, it's super essential for men to be doing this, this, this inner work so that we can access more, uh, a more fuller version of ourselves to really tap in and understand what it is uh, about the feminine and the masculine energy and how we can ebb and flow with both and how we can bring that into harmony, how we can you know, heal the wounds that we carry. We can release the emotions that are suppressed and that are holding us down or heavy and open our hearts, you know, opening our hearts, you know, that allows us to see what our truth is. 
Mm -hmm. The truth always lies in the heart. And, you know, when we can, we can access that, that part of ourselves, there's just so much infinite, you know, there's, there's an infinite potentiality, we'll say. Right. Well, the heart, you know, I always say to everybody, when the brain dies and the heart's pumping, the body's living. It's because the highest energy point in our body is our heart. But when the heart dies, the entire body dies. So allowing ourselves to feel more and use every other sense as a complement to the heart energy coupled with gratitude, I think is, is a great space to be when we understand our words and our brains and all that stuff. And it's, really, it's just the complement. Yeah, and it's essential for, for men to like understand why we are the way we are. Mm -hmm. Why do we think this way? Why do we act this way? You know, what triggers us? Why is it triggering us? You know, why are we having these arguments with our wives? Or why are we, why are we like, you know, having these reoccurring challenges? Or why are we have these habits that are not serving us? And as men begin to awaken and like start to realize, hmm, you know, there's something else that's there. There's, or there's something that's not resonating anymore. You know, then we start getting hungry for more. And then with more of that, more of men coming online, as I like to say, uh, not this online, but also this, yeah, I get it. I but this <laughs> also online because there's a lot of good things happening online. Um, that curiosity brings brings them into spaces where they they can remove the mask, take down the armor, access more of themselves, and 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 uh, feel a camaraderie around with other men that are on a similar path, on a similar awakening journey. I like the I like the way that you're very intentional with understanding with the work that you're doing with men um is under and i know you do it with women and children but uh, this particular segment we're talking about men and i like the that you're introducing the idea of karmic energy of what sorry karmic energy from lineage yeah yeah, yeah. understanding what has been compounded generationally and how you can change the trajectory of that just by being still and understanding how you're going to disengage with the energy of the lineage that was unhealthy and create a new energetic flow in a direction that is healthier and more in alignment with what you say were nature, balancing out the feminine. And I like the way that you're really bringing forth the, the, the importance of how it affects and filters through the communities or families you know, as husbands towards our wives, towards our children. I, I really, you know, I, I support, thank you is what I have to say. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just just by seeing like men over the last two years that I've been running men's circles, just, okay, first I'll start off just by seeing my own transformation and my own healing and what that's done for me um, and addressing things that I've inherited from my father, from his father and, and, doing so with with a level of compassion that like and and awareness that they were operating from their level of consciousness maybe they didn't know better maybe mm -hmm. they didn't have access to you know a better way of being we'll say and um and acknowledging my father for not caring some of the or or, or putting a stop to some of the things that he inherited from his grandfather from his father but then also me seeing things of my father that I do not want to carry on and pass on or things for me that I carry that I need to heal within me, which, which I have done a lot of that. And then seeing men coming into, into these men's circles and, um, and seeing their life change over the last two years, just, there's a, a incredible change. Marriage is get, getting much better, a sense of peace and calmness, clarity, purpose coming through, a new zest for life, like a rebirth almost. Um, and also even if their partnerships don't work out they have the tools they have the support they have the brotherhood to like support them through that process of like a, a, an, un, a, an uncoupling or a breakup or what it's like women we have this great support system you know when we're going through those rough times we really have that circle that sisterhood of circle that lifts us up and men typically don't have it but you're suggesting that not suggesting but you're creating you're you're, you're pioneering one of the pioneers of the world that are creating that space for that to start to emerge and evolve yeah and, and now more than ever it's it's more accessible 
Mm. There's some incredible men's men's coaches, men's work facilitators, groups all over the world that are doing amazing things. And I'm so inspired by them. That's what mm-hmm. keeps me like inspired as well in the sense of, you know, seeing what they're doing, learning from them, even taking some of their courses and whatnot. There's an incredible group called the um, uh, Sacred Sons. They're based out of California and they're like pioneering the way. And I was able to do one of their um, convergence uh, weekend retreats last year. And it was just like amazing to see like what we're, we're capable of when we like direct this energy to like being a, a, a better person and accessing more of our, you know, of our, of our gifts and allowing that to ripple out, giving other men permission to do the same. And it, it's a ripple effect, just like mm-hmm. all the healing that we can do, men, women, children, you know, it's, it, it ripples out. And, and mm-hmm. that's the balance that we're doing as being awakened beings on this planet to help humanity is to do our own work, mm. you know, heal ourselves and like um, raise our vibration so that we can ripple that out. And that's how we can, you know, bring the, the harmony back. Into, you know, we hear and we see a lot of fear and a lot of, you know, turmoil happening in the world and it's so sad and it's that's actually happening. And then there's also this side of the pendulum that's also happening where, where people are waking up doing this healing that are ending generational, you know, traumas and, 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 and evil stuff as well. And so it's like, it's a, I like, there's so many little nuggets that you put in there. I'm like, my brain's going, it's like, I, I, you know, I love the fact that um, you talked about the compassion piece, you know, understanding your father, your father and your grandfathers and your lineage of the males coming down your bloodline. And instead of being angry about it, or maybe there was a level of anger, you you deliberately well you not deliberately you use the word um, compassion, where you had compassion to their circumstances, their situation, and also you were gra- grateful uh, because of, and not just about the level of understanding. Because I always say to people, it's so easy to have awareness. That's like out, out of the stages. The awareness is easy for me. Let me rephrase that for me. It's the work once that awareness comes. And you made a decision through that awareness, through that compassion, through that forgiveness, through all of that, you made a decision that you would do your work to change because you recognize I have a daughter. But most of all, you used the word earlier on, learning how to receive men have to learn how to receive and it is learning how to receive love from a different space and I think that's phenomenal yeah yeah totally it's it it, that really gives permission to open the heart because when we can receive without um, skepticism like oh well what do you want in return for you giving me love and space and support you know when we can remove that and just be like oh this is my turn to receive oh okay everyone's taking a deep breath for me wow no one's ever done that for me before right i was giving me like their full attention to like speak my what did that feel like for you oh it's amazing that's that's the, the medicine that's that's part of the medicine yeah it's 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 good you feel heard you feel like that you feel safe you feel like you have permission to to receive to- does it feel like does it reshape you I, you know and i know going through my own healing you know does it reshape you from the perspective of you can never go back you know they talk about the matrix the red pill the blue pill is it like you can never go back to being that person over here because now you know that what it feels like to feel good, to feel love, to feel community, to feel connection. So anything outside of that feeling in that moment that you're able to receive and you're completely open, it almost feels like a lack of self-love. I mean, a, a lot of a lot of the root of a lot of ailments, illnesses, disharmony is a lack of self-love. Mm. Um, that that's that's a, that's across the board, you know. Um, but there was something that you said there about, um, I, I just lost it. It was there. Um, oh, when we expand our consciousness, when we expand ourselves or when we um, gain um, something outside of our box, you know, we expand that box. We're like, oh, okay. No, it doesn't go back 
but we still have to choose to see through the lens of what we've expanded to mm. because mm -hmm. habits ego fear can bring us back to a, up to an older version of ourselves so it's important to remember that this work that we're doing for ourselves and the, the expansion that we're, ha we're having of, of our consciousness of our awareness that we still have access to see through that lens of this expanded awareness but we have to choose and sometimes we don't always choose mm -hmm. right but the funny thing about the universe is that the universe will always show us again and give us another opportunity to, oh, shit, okay, yeah. <laughs> I learned this lesson. Why, why? You know, because we're not choosing to see through that lens of experience right. awareness. Right. And I, I, I believe in the science of this aspect of it because I think there's many layers to it. And I say that the emotion that my mother was feeling in her room, you know, obviously I inherit and that feeling sends a signal to the brain. It lets a chemical out into the body. And now all of a sudden my body, I come out into the world and my body's like, okay, well, where is that fit? So it starts to recreate the events. You call it lenses. And it's like, okay, why is this happening again? And it's like, my body's looking for that fix. Mm. That, that, that rush of emotion to send the signal to the brain, to send a flood of chemicals infused. And it's like shooting a drug, an addictive sub substance. Mm. And some people are more addicted to the emotion than another. Right? And I remember waking up to that myself and thinking to myself, all right, when things started to happen, I removed myself from the situation almost from an aerial view to understand, okay, well, my body was going through this. It's looking for a rush. Do I still require this? Do I still need this fix? And it was profound that as I did my mirror work and looking deep into my eyes, into my soul, and I answered the question, no, it just started to get smaller and smaller requiring, but, and that was my experience. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the science component to all of this as well. Um, when we're talking about the fix or the itch or, you know, the, this, this, this part, the, the parts of our self subconscious will say that like, you know, brings us to like certain pattern or habitual, you know, um, actions. Um, that's why like the implementation of tools and practices that help us to be in stillness and allow, there's an, anal an analogy of like, if we see our brain and we have these, these tracks that we constantly go down like certain thought, thought processes, certain loops, certain habits or whatnot, you know, we're so used to going that that's our go-to. We, we go down these tracks, but we, if we sit in stillness and if we allow the snow to cover those tracks, have a, have a uh, even playing field, then we can start building these new neural pathways and we can mm -hmm. start choosing and, and, and creating new habits and creating new thought processes. And, you know, that's why these tools and practices are so important because they give us that opportunity to start building these new neural pathways. It's great. <laughs> I love it. I love the science. Like I, I get so intrigued by the science aspect because <laughs> it's amazing how they're all, you know, how it all pulls together. Um, I, I appreciate the fact that you're very supportive of understanding that humans are nature. I say that when we die, we fertilize the earth. We have a level of responsibility for how we eat. There was a, sorry to interrupt you. There was a, oh. my friend said to me once, he's like, um, what do you, oh, you said, um, the earth is farming us. It's feeding us. And then we die and we become their fertilizer. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and we become, you said it, we become so disconnected to the idea that we are part of the ecosystem. Mm. And there's a huge, there's, you know, again, we can go into a whole other show about, it, about the ecosystem and how we fit into it and where we've lost sight of it and, and all the rest of that. Um, but I do appreciate the fact that um, it is part of your awakening to really have individuals on a whole embrace that idea. Um, what uh we we have about five minutes left to the show and i just wanted to know what nuggets that you feel um 
men can walk away with, uh, you know, maybe two nuggets that come to your mind of what they can walk away with listening tonight on really taking that one step towards opening the valve of their heart. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be to be open to, to connecting with men in a different way. You know, be, be open to not having an agenda or not being um, feared of being judged. Um, and yeah, like seek community, you know, mm -hmm. seek uh, men that are doing things that, you know, can nourish your mind, body, and soul. Because there's so many things that, you know, we do that are the opposite of that, you know? And so it's, it's important to know that there are, there are groups and spaces that, um, that are open to having you, that are, that are more than happy to have you, to, to give you a safe space to just be as you are, to process something that maybe you're processing, to have that support and know, like, the bottom, bottom line is we're all going through something. Mm -hmm. There's always something to process. <laughs> You know, there's always something in the process, but it's, but we don't have to do it alone. And, and as men, it's like, we don't have to be the lone wolf anymore. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can be part of a wolf pack and because everyone in the pack, we're much stronger, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, there's, um, there's time to be the lone wolf, but it's time to return to the pack and it's time for us to get stronger. It's time for us to process. It's time for us to shift and evolve. And really, you know, keep up with the times and, and be the, the leaders and be the be the, um, the caregivers and be the co-creators, you know, so that we can support our women, so we can support our children, support our communities. The time is now. I love it. And at Evolve Brothers, Evolving Brothers, they can partner with you and come and be a part of your, your space. Um, and that is on... Um, at Evolving Brothers is on Instagram, is it? Yeah, at Evolving Brothers, yeah. At Evolving Brothers, right. So they can connect with you there. Yeah, we'll be having an online uh, men's gathering within the next two weeks, I believe. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So everybody, I'm asking you all to at Evolving Brothers on Instagram, um, at Luminous Collective on Instagram. All this is on Instagram at Soul Brother Day, at Vital Key Wellness as well. Um, you know, please connect with Dane. He's a healing artist. He's a holistic practitioner, a curator of conscious communities. We have Dr. Shah Ray writing in. Thank you for doing this work. I practice vulnerability with my son. So thank you very much. Um, you just reminding the audience that you work one-on-one, -on -one, you do retreats, you international. Um, you're just amazing. Your soul is pure. And, you know, you know, we couldn't thank you enough for pioneering and leading the way. I know you are giving you're so humble where you're giving credit to all men well i want to highlight you in this moment and say thank you thank you i received that i'm happy to be on this path it's an honor i'm super grateful to be living my purpose and to um helping others do the same the ripple effect that's what that's what it's all about it is it is so thank you everyone for tuning in tonight thank you for listening to soul brother dane join us this evening on the whole man uh Please uh, remember to like and subscribe to Tanya Talks for on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and also on YouTube and Twitter. Thank you again for joining us. Join us next week, uh, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. In the Instagram, you will find all the updates on who our next speakers will be. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, Dane. Good night. Thank you.